Well, first things first, I got this fancy Excel coil because it was relatively cheap. And um, yeah, because it was relatively cheap, basically. Um, I don't have the screw, so I'm gonna have to, uh, and I just realized that too. So I am gonna have to probably uh, get a little creative with zip ties, I think. But we gotta make sure which wire has positive, and, and it's gonna be this one for sure should be the hot because this wire comes from the distributor and so that should be my negative signal um, as would be typical and then this I'm assuming is going to be temp sensor there I'm pretty sure but we'll kind of cross that bridge actually no that doesn't look like it's going to be temp sensor that looks like maybe something for the coil and this maybe is temp sensor that's the problem with having stuff that's been taken apart before you got to it, is now you really just don't know what is what. But um, we're going to figure it out nonetheless. And uh, so we'll turn on the key. And we're going to test both of these for, uh, for 12 volts with our handy dandy test light. The one that has 12 volts is going to go to the positive. The one that does not is going to go to the negative. And I'm going to go ahead and put this, what I believe to be temp sensor wire, in its place. Um, so, turn the key on, and one of my favorite things about this skidster is the god-awful squealing noise it makes when you turn on the key. I'm not sure why it needs to make that much noise, but it does all the same. So, you turn on the key and check for power. Amazingly, that battery held juice even after a year of sitting and making it through a winter. Yeah, as you can see, we've got 12 volts there, no 12 volts there, and just for kicks and laughs, we'll check this one, which also does not have 12 volts. So, let me go ahead and get some wrenches, or a wrench, I guess, rather, and some zip ties to... Uh, to try and figure out how to attach this and um, yeah, we'll go from there Okay, so we got negative on negative positive on positive and now we have a little gratuitous zip tie moment so what we're gonna do here is and go zip tie like that we're going to go a zip tie like this. And I think this will work the way I want it to. Go under the clamp and around on top. And we'll uh, zip tie like so. We're going to go around the clamp and through the zip ties on the bottom like uh, you know, might not be able to get it all the way to the bottom but nonetheless we will at least have some semblance of control over said coil I believe, maybe <laughs> maybe this will work, I don't know to be honest, but I think it will. So, um, then we're going to tighten up this zip tie, and we're going to tighten up this zip tie, and this zip tie, and then well, the coil kind of should stay in place. Go ahead and snip the ends, and we have fixed the retainer problem temporarily until I get a new bracket that uh, is actually correct. For right now, I just want to make sure that this thing is going to run. I mean, we'll make it run one way or the other, I assure you. But, there. Throw away my zip tie ends and set my tools down.
like I said, Dad told me that it was running when the, uh, obviously when they were hauling gravel, it had to have been running. But, uh, not sure how I'm going to see that, so hopefully you guys get to see if it's got spark, because I'm sure as hell not going to be able to. But, anyways, here we go, and we'll get to see if we got a, see if we got a winner. video see if I've got spark here if we do great if not then I guess we have to look a bit further and then we'll make a concerted effort to make this thing run okay so we're gonna do a little testing here um, I see that I did not have spark but I opened up the uh, distributor and found that the points were just staying open like that spring has gotten heated up so I reshaped the spring a little bit. It's uh, Sunday, and so it's going to be too late to get parts right now. Riley's only open until 3, and it's after that. So that, and I am not even sure what to look for for parts. i got to do a little bit of research on that. But um, at any rate, I've got that reshaped, and I'll show you guys something here. <laughs> I hope you'll be able to see this, but basically, you can see uh, I may have to do a little adjustment, but you can see that it's sparking, which means that everything's working the way it's supposed to. I probably just need to file a little bit on those points and um, make a small adjustment here <clears throat> and then we'll kind of go from there. But that is kind of how you tell if your points and everything seem is working all right. You just want to open up, just uh, take it to a flat spot on the, on the cam in the distributor and then open it, snap it shut a couple times. And that'll usually tell you what you need to know. But, and we may not be able to do, quite honestly, anything here just because that spring is all wonky on this thing. Um, but we're going to give it a shot anyways. So I'll make some adjustments here and we'll try it again. So I made a slight adjustment to the points um, and just run some emery cloth in there real quick. Uh, we'll see if we can get a consistent zap now. No, we're still not getting a consistent zing. Uh, yeah, I'm not even, I don't even remember for sure what the points gap setting is on this. I'm going to have to do a little bit of research and uh, oh, we'll see if we can't, uh, see if we can't make this thing produce some spark yet here. Well, I made some adjustments. have consistent spark so we're going to go ahead and put the cap back on rotor put it all back together and uh, see if we can't get spark this time hell maybe it'll fire right up who knows could get lucky
put that in. We'll go grab the spark tester again. Spark tester is on. Let's give her a whirl. Okay, I'm going to look at that video, see if it is uh, sparking, and we'll go from there. Good afternoon, tube of yous. As you can see, I've been doing quite a bit of cleanup here and uh, just getting some stuff done. But anyways, um, back to this skid steer. So we got a new set of points and a condenser in there. And uh, I will show you here, I've got consistent zingy zingy when I pop points. Um, Let me see here, almost looks like those points are cooking again but geez that kind of looks like ah it looks like those points are getting cooked already put them in the other day but anyways I uh so now let's see I kind of wonder if this thing isn't supposed to have a resistor in line but uh got uh well hopefully we got good zingy zingy we'll find out here in a minute i don't think i left the key on yeah, it looks like i got Got it every time now. So we should have spark. I guess we'll find out if we're going to have a winner here or not. Put the cap back on. And the rotor. Or the, excuse me, the, not the cap, the plate there, whatever you call that piece. And we'll snap the cap back into place oh, dang it uh, and well let's see if we got a runner hopefully you know honestly if there's fuel up in the bowl it should pop right off as long as we got spark but I guess we'll see what kind of a dramatic situation this is going to be hopefully not bad if it runs then we can figure out the hydraulic leak as you can see i got plenty of hydraulic fluid now and uh then we can go from there and work on getting this thing back into usable condition so here we go okay well let's let her rip tater chip see what we got That was very undramatic, um, but I'm going to say we got something worth uh, worth working on at that point. Sounds pretty good. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll move on to the hydraulic leaks from there, I guess. Um, and 
see if we can't get that stuff addressed so i guess until another video look forward to seeing more of this case 1835b skid steer in the future later